name is um, Kylie Walsh. I'm the general manager of the Dye Jones Group. And we've got a few members of our team here this evening. We really just wanted to bring you up to speed face to face and answer any questions directly from the floor that we could and let you know what we're doing as a company that you've entrusted to manage your asset moving forward around the new legislation that's coming. Um, there's some pretty big amendments to, to the Act, but also some tenancy laws, something that's flown under the radar um, a little bit prior to Christmas. This was, was flagged um, in 2017, um, and I think there hasn't been a lot of talk about it, but it, it has come through, it is coming at the end of financial year. Um, if you've got any family or friends or colleagues or relatives or overseas that have investment property in Australia, there's some pretty big changes coming in relation to um, capital gains tax. A lot of people that live abroad have an investment property here that might be their, their primary place of residence and that intended to move back into that property. Um, they need to speak to their accountant and they need to speak to their accountant now. So um, if they don't dispose of that property by the 30th of June, um, they potentially could lose depending on their personal situation of which I've put down a couple of, a couple of outs there. Um, they could lose that exemption. So I want to talk to you about the, I guess, the impacts that are coming for owners and how we're going to handle that moving forward. Um, there's new material facts that haven't applied um, to residential property owners previously, particularly around um, the manufacturing or the cultivation of a prohibited drug in your rental property in two years previous. Now, being the eastern suburbs and inner city, we have had this problem with a number of our rental properties over the years, and there's never been, um, unless the air or the building actually has a certain reading, there's never been a reason for us to disclose that. After um, the legislation comes in at the end of March, this will actually be a requirement now for us to have to disclose this. Um, in a strata scheme where there's rectification works coming up, then we'll need to disclose that for any new tenancies. Um, if there's any uh, fire safety orders that have been issued or there's uh, rectification works that are needing to be done in a, in a block of units, then that will need to be um, disclosed as well. And any notices of intention to issue a building product or rectification order will apply, and same for a DA. So what's really important moving forward is that we have some really good conversations with you. So if you're aware of any DAs that might um, you know, be, be neighbouring or on the existing property or anything in relation to fire safety orders, we really need to know about it. We need to have a good conversation around that with you. Our investment managers are very happy to go to strata meetings if you want them to, particularly annual general meetings. And if you've got minutes from annual general meetings, we would really like a copy of that because that will help us in deciphering what we need to, to disclose. Um, a landlord or agent must not make any false or misleading statements. Well, we know that and, that, and that's best practice, but we really can't conceal things. So if there's conversations going on about, but don't tell the tenant when they move in, or we've done this, or this was a problem in the past, um, if, if you advise us, we, we have to disclose. If we're aware of something that became a problem with um, mould or flooding or things like that in a previous tenancy, it's not enough anymore to have a conversation with your agent saying, please don't disclose. There is actually an obligation where that has to, has to occur. Before signing, th this, is, this is grey and it's yet to be tested. And I'm just letting you know that up front because I don't think the powers of B have thought about this. So before signing an agreement, a landlord or agent must also tell a tenant of any proposed intention to sell the property if the landlord has prepared a contract for sale. This could also happen whereby you might say to your agent, oh, I can't sell the house, I'm going to rent it for a while, but if the market picks up, I'll probably look at putting it back on the market later. If the tenant can prove that that conversation's happened, or there's a paper trail or intent that this has gone on, the tenant can walk into the office during a fixed term tenancy, drop the keys on the front counter with 14 days notice and walk away from the lease. So any discussions up front or any plans that you've got for your investment property, we really would encourage you to have a good face-to-face -face meeting um, or a phone call. Our property managers are happy to come to you. If you're local, come to you, meet you at the property. If we know what your plans are for the property for the next year, two years or five years, it will help us with nurturing this and looking after your best interests moving forward. Um, and from the 23rd of March, <coughs> before a tenancy agreement is signed, we will need to give the tenant by law a copy of the bylaws. Now we've always done this at Di Jones, but if you have got new bylaws that we may not be aware of, 
or the strata scheme is not communicated, it's actually a requirement moving forward. So we're going to prepare a bit of a health check or a checklist for our property managers um, to contact you between now and when the new legislation comes in to make sure that we're absolutely compliant and you are absolutely represented in the most professional way. So that's what I spoke about with the 14 days is, um, is being the ramifications during a fixed term tenancy. Some changes coming with smoke alarms. At Di Jones for the last six years, we have been very compliant in this space. In fact, we have a best practice ethos that regardless of what the legislation is, that annually we get our clients to check um, their smoke alarms, but we use a third party company. And I'm gonna be really, really frank about why we do that, and I'm on camera. It's if the place burns down and God forbid, something happens, we've actually got third party liability where we're not part of it and you're not part of it. And that company we've, we've contracted out that, those obligations too. Now in the past, we've had a lot of clients, particularly in the Eastern suburbs say, but the, the body corporate look after that. Well, they only have to test three units in a block of units for that to be compliant. They don't have to test every unit in a block of units. Now, I don't know about you, but I've got investment properties, and if one of my properties wasn't tested in a block of units and a child died or someone died, I would never forgive myself, A. But secondly, our job is to protect you from potential liability. Moving forward, it won't actually be if you want to do that, you will have to do it annually. So if you're currently not signed up to our third party um, smoke alarm service that goes in and tests those things for you, you need to get on board with that. You do not have a choice. It becomes legislation. And from the 23rd of March, that will apply for any new tenancies. So our guys can give you some information around our partnership that we have in place for that to protect you. And the compliance certificates on that um, are, are very, very thorough. They're integrated with our database. It's all automated and it just takes the, the risk away from yourself. <clears throat> there are some things that will come in here. So if a tenant record, um, rings us after the end of March and says that the smoke alarm is not working, we must fix it within 48 hours on your behalf. Must be done. Um, and there's, there's some good legislation that's been introduced for us to, to get into the property to be able to do that, even if they're being a little bit difficult. Replacing a smoke alarm with a new smoke alarm after the unit's 10 years old. We've been doing that for a long time. For any of you that entrust us with that service, legislation. Carrying out annual checks to ensure all the smoke alarms are installed correctly. Because what happens when a tenant moves in? It's beeping during the night. What do they do? Yeah, right. So when we do our routine inspections on your behalf, you, you do not want one of our property managers on a chair checking smoke alarms. Let's get a qualified person in there for the sake of $99 a year it is, and again, having investment properties myself, it is the wisest investment you can make when you've got an investment property in New South Wales. Any questions on the smoke alarms? Obligations for tenants. This is new, this is good. So the tenants will need to notify the landlord if a repair or replacement to a smoke alarm is required. This includes replacing the battery, so they can't just shut it down or pull it out. A tenant can choose to replace a removable battery in a smoke alarm, but they have to notify the landlord. Now the OFT are going to give us a checklist or a safety checklist with new tenancy um, that we will give on your behalf at new tenancies to make sure that you're compliant with this legislation in their new sign up tenancy list. Um, tenants are entitled under the new legislation to be reimbursed for the cost and the repair of the replacement of the smoke alarm, providing they've communicated with us and they give us evidence. So this is, a, this is a big space for us moving forward, for your agents. It's very litigious, but that's, that's what we're here for. And if there ever, with this legislation, was a reason to have an agent. If you are on charging water charges, um, it's time to make sure that um, you are getting some very good pricing in the next couple of years from our line tradespeople in relation to particularly toilets. So they're going to give you a bit of time to get this sorted, but by 2025, if you are on charging your water charges, you will need to make sure that you have a minimum of a three-star dual flushing, thank you, water efficient toilet. At the start of any new tenancies, after the end of March, you must make sure that you don't have any leaking taps, shower heads, uh, leaking washers, taps dripping in the garden, because if the tenant proves that it's not water efficient, they won't have to pay the bill. 
Okay, so we're gonna get some pricing for you. So don't go renovating any bathrooms and not put dual flush or three star minimum in because you're gonna to have to rip it out and put a new system in by 2025 anyway. So our recommendation working with you moving forward is that you may as well get that done now and we may as well make sure that you're water efficient for any new tenancies moving forward. Structurally sound. This is another grey area where I think it will need to be tested, but there's going to be some requirements coming with the new legislation around structurally sound. You'll have to make sure that before a new tenancy starts, your property is structurally sound. Well, what does that mean? Given that we're in the largest held terraced suburbs in the world, what does that mean? And I can't tell you yet because I haven't seen the, the definitions of that coming through. So from tonight, there might be some more information coming through in relation to that. Must be free from mould and have adequate ventilation. I live in a Federation house in Willoughby and I can tell you that at any given month of the year, I have mould. But I feel that my house is well ventilated, but I live in Sydney. So how, how are they going to regulate that? I can't tell you because the, the definitions of that further haven't come through and those cases haven't been tested. So in relation to minimum requirements for new tenancies coming through, I think there's a bit of work to do and I think someone sitting in their ivory tower hasn't thought about that. Adequate plumbing and drainage. What does that mean? I mean, my, my yard flooded last week. So I think there's, there's going to be really important for us moving forward when we're doing routines is the use of video, is contacting you from the property when we're walking through. There might be a lot of FaceTime. Um, but we need to get instructions from you over the coming weeks around what are your instructions. Do you want it photographed and videoed and sent to you later? Do you want, while we're walking through the property, do you, do you want to be FaceTimed? What is that? There is never going to be a more important time, I believe, than in New South Wales with agency practice for you guys to have a great relationship with your property manager. Communication is going to be key with this new legislation moving forward. Um, landlords are currently required to provide the rented property in a reasonable state of cleanliness. Again, what does that mean? So um, what I would be saying in relation to this, is anyone actually had a formal tax depreciation schedule done or does your accountant just do it for you? Has anyone used BMT tax depreciation schedules before? I have for my property. So there's only about three or four hands that went up. What I would be doing is encouraging you with this new legislation to come is to speak to your senior property manager or I will get a lease when she calls you in the next couple of days to give you some more information around this. Because if something is out of the age where it's fully depreciated, then maybe this is the opportunity to work with your property manager on a 12 month plan around, um, around replacing some of your items or making sure that you've at least got a record of what it looks like now moving forward for the new legislation. Get BMT to go and have a look and they have a guarantee with Die Jones clients that if you don't get back more than what you've previously got with your own account and tax appreciation schedule, you will not pay for the report. So you've got nothing to lose. They're usually about $800. As a corporate partner of BMT, it's $715. But it is for the life of the property and I can guarantee you that you will get more than what you do with your own accountant and if you don't, you won't pay for the report. So I don't know how much more fair that can be. And we'll help you with that fit for habitation. Three weeks rent equivalent is to be paid if 25% or more, but not less than 50% of the lease has expired. Two weeks rent if 50% or more, but not less than 75%, and one week's rent if 75% or more of the lease has expired. Again, never been a better reason in my opinion to have an agent's gonna work that out for you and you don't have to worry about it. So from the 23rd of March, any new tenancies, that's how it's gonna be for breaking leases. That'll be written in the lease. Yep, 500%, that'll be in your, in your lease. So we're having to do all new checklists, all new tenancy lease packs, um, change our condition reports when we go through and for a new tenancy, our routines, everything that we touch in our business has to be completely changed. And we have a full um, compliance team, I'm not sure if any of you know that, but we actually have a couple of people working full time in compliance to make sure that you're protected. And there's not many agencies that have actually got a centralised compliance team. 
So at the moment, our corporate team are completely going through with our ops team and, and redoing all of our compliance protocol to make sure that you're, you're covered. Um, do the laws apply to existing residential tenancies? There is only four things that will apply and be grandfathered to existing leases. So if you're sitting here thinking, oh, that's good, doesn't apply, my guy's been there for 12 years, these are the following things that apply to existing tenancies. Is the break lease fees will only apply where you have got new fixed term agreements that your existing tenants are entering into that are three years or less. New, land info new landlord information statements are required only when entering into a new residential tenancy agreement. So you don't need to do that for existing. And the, and the condition reports will only need to be done for new tenancies, but you need to start working with your agent now on the water efficiency measures. And I think it's gonna become very gray about um, what's habitable and is the, property, um, is the property structurally sound. So they're very clear that that is for only new tenancies from March. My personal opinion, and this is nothing else than my personal experience in 26 years in the industry, is I think you're going to see start to get very grey with magistrates at tribunal about what's habitable because they say, well, under the new legislation, so you should probably get it ready. We're seeing a lot of activity coming from Inner West to Paddington, so no surprises that Inner West will probably be another office for us um, moving forward. But where our buyers are coming to and from will tell us where our business needs to go because it makes much more sense for us with a centralised database to push one button and talk to everybody than everyone operating in silos. Um, and what's next? We're going to continue to evolve um, innovation and world-class marketing so we minimise your vacancy and maximise your returns. That's it. It's pretty, pretty uncomplicated, but that's the, that's the strategic direction of the business. Great question. The boss will be really happy you asked that. I can... <laughs> Who's the owner now? So Robert Ward um, is the current owner of the Die Jones business. So um, Rob's had a business for 23 years in Warunga. Um, he started there. Uh, Rob and I worked together when I was at a previous role. And um, when Di asked me to come and come and work for the company in 2014, and she said to me, like, well, you know, we're getting to the end of end of our career. Um, we, we've been approached many, many times over the years by people wanting to buy the brand because it is such an exceptional brand and, and Diane Bill did an incredible job growing this business. Um, so I, I phoned Rob, who was a personal friend of mine, an ex-client, and said, he's an amazing brand. Um, Diane's not going to let it go easily. She'll have to like you and make sure that um, you're aligned to her thinking and offer great service to her clients. And, um, and, and that's basically how it, how it came about with Rob being the new owner of the business. No questions? Great. So if you'd like to have a cold water, please fill in your survey forms because we only do these, these, these events to make sure that you have the information that you need to know about and to say hi. Please stay and chat to the team if you can and um, please leave me your survey. Thank you very much.